G'day champions, hope you're all well. If you've ever wondered what's inside an outboard gear case and how it all works, this is gonna be a great video for you guys to check out. Um, I'm gonna be pulling this one right apart. It's got a problem with shifting. It's not shifting and selecting gears properly, so I'm gonna be tearing it right down. We can have a look at all the parts inside and you know, sort of see what's happening with this gear case and we can run through how it all works during that process and hopefully I can find out what's missing or what's happened so that this gear case you know, start shifting properly again. Let's get into it. So to disassemble this gear case, I need to remove the rear bearing carrier. So there's two bolts here that hold the rear bearing carrier in and the whole prop shaft and rear gear assembly is held in by those two bolts. So I'll undo those two and I'll pull the prop shaft. That prop shaft will come out, the rear bearing carrier and the reverse gear. The front gear, we'll have a look in a minute, that will remain inside the gear case and I've already drained the oil. I've undone that plug, drained it out. I also loosened off the oil fill and that just helped the oil drain out quickly. All right, I'll undo these two bolts and we'll pull this out and hopefully we find a clean set of gears with no little glistening bits of broken metal. All right, let's pull that off. So I've just undone those two bolts and I can see the rear bearing carrier already starting to come out. So I think this has been a part relatively recently because normally you'd have to put a slide pull or some sort of you know pulling mechanism to pull that rear bearing carrier out so it is interesting that i'm actually yeah i'm actually able to pull this out by hand so that's definitely been a part okay so often people when they're pulling the part they'll lose these bits we'll run through all that in a minute but that there is the reverse gear, and this is called the dog clutch that actually selects forward and reverse in the whole system of shifting gears. We'll run through that in a sec, but I'm not seeing any metal shavings or missing teeth, which is good on the reverse gear. All right, let's have a look inside. So inside this gear case, we have the forward gear, which I'm pointing to there. And then up above that, we have a pinion gear. So that pinion gear there is connected directly to the drive shaft. So if I was to spin this drive shaft, same way that the motor would spin it, same direction, you can see that top pinion gear is spinning and it's spinning that forward gear clockwise. We will run through this in a sec, but the dog clutch will actually engage into these three recesses in the forward gear when you select forward. So the dog clutch will go clunk and then it will grab the prop shaft and spin it at the same speed as that gear. So whilst we're in here too, we'll have a little look at up the very end there, you can see this selector going up and down as I pull up and down on the gear selector for this outboard gear case. So if I'm right up, you can see it's, it's deeper in there, and then we've got a middle height, and then we've got a closer height. So what we'd have here is forward, and then it will push the dog away, which will push it out of that forward gear, and that will just be spinning in between the two gears. And then we have an even higher one, which will push the dog clutch into the reverse gear. So we'll have a look at that now. So here we have the reverse gear and the dog clutch. So you can see that dog clutch actually has those three teeth which push into those three sections in the forward or reverse gear. So this part here is where that selector goes up and down and pushes this dog clutch. At the moment it would be in forward gear. Then if that shifter came down and pushed it a little bit, see if I can do it, it will actually push that dog clutch back. So that would be neutral that would be forward. And then if I push really hard, so that would be reverse. So that would be basically, I'll just push this assembly back together. See if we can do this one handed. So yeah, so you can see those teeth fully engaged in that gear when it selects reverse. So neutral is with this dog clutch just spinning between the forward gear and reverse gear and reverse will be when it pushes right in. Forward is basically, yeah, 
with the selector up and that's just pushing into the forward gear. So the reason that reverse works is you've got the pinion gear spinning this way and the forward gear is gonna spin clockwise with that pinion gear. The reverse gear is actually spinning the other way. So those two gears with the one pinion gear are spinning opposite directions. So it's a very simple system. So this dog clutch is basically what organizes forward and reverse. So as a bit of a better visual, I've got an old gear case. I've just cut the bottom off. It is C, so I'm not too worried about it. You can see there's the pinion gear connected to the drive shaft. That's upside down at the moment. So that's the pinion gear we were looking at inside the gear case. And here we have the gear set. So at the front there, we have the forward gear, front bearing, and there's the pin poking out for the shifter. And we have the dog clutch in the middle, sitting in neutral position between the two gears. We have the rear or reverse gear there and the rear bearing carrier there. And we have a look at that shift shaft. You can see there three distinct levels on that so the thin one is for the forward gear the center height is neutral and the taller one is reversed that is quite worn out this was off a houseboat so it's probably done 4,000 hours <laughs> yeah so that that's the parts there's a shifter pinion gear forward gear reverse gear dog clutch and that shifter pin that moves the dog clutch forward and backwards and that section there is the rear bearing carrier. So looking at what I think may be missing with this gear case, I feel like there should be some sort of washer here or something in between this, this little face here and the shaft inside there. So I'm gonna pull apart another gear case that I know works, that has a seized drive shaft, but this prop shaft assembly is good in it, and just see what the other gear case has. I'm pretty lucky to be able to have some parts around that I can do that with, um, or I could look up the parts manual, but I think it's just quicker for me to, I'm gonna need to get the part anyway, and if I can get it out of another gear case, that would be awesome. This has a seized drive shaft, but the gear, gear set and prop shaft in this should be okay because we've still got you know free spinning here so and the and the gear selector on this one actually all works so i may be able to take some parts out of this to fix this as long as it's not the shims for the gears but if we're just missing a washer or something i should be able to take from this and fix this guy up so i've just pulled out that other prop shaft assembly which is all fine something that jumps out to me straight away is how far the this shifter pin pokes out so on the gear case where it was selecting fine it's poking out a lot more which actually does make sense because i was getting forward easily and reverse was hard so it wasn't hard it was very hard to get reverse so if this was further out it would push the dog clutch further back that way secondly this dog clutch here is actually installed the other way around. So I don't know if someone's had this off fully apart, possibly put the dog clutch on the wrong way around, which I will have to verify. And inside here, there's normally a ball bearing and another little solid cylindrical bit. I feel like one of those may be missing in this. So I will see what, you know, other parts are in this shifter for the one that is working and see if I can put them in here. And also I might take that dog clutch off, flip it around. I can test the gear case on my bench before installing it. So anyway, it's interesting. Someone's definitely had this apart and had a play with it and possibly put things back together in the wrong order. So I was, I was actually assuming that there, there would be another, you know, little spacer between the end of that teeth section and the forward gear inside the gear case, but it doesn't look like it. So it could just be these few things have been installed wrong and maybe missing a part 
and put them in and see if we can get this thing to select properly. I've just pulled the selector pins out of both assemblies and yeah, there is no cylindrical bit. There's basically just the selector pin and a ball bearing in both. So then the only difference is I think that this dog clutch must be installed the wrong way around. So I will flip that around and I reckon that may well sort our problem, fingers crossed. So I'll give that a go. All right, I've just removed that retention spring. I should be able to push out the little pin in here to let the dog clutch come right off. And we will spin that over. What else have we got in there? There is, it looks like there is a little, I'll take that spring right out. Oh, okay, so that there is where the pin goes through for the dog clutch. So, so I'll put that back in. All right, let's see if we can get this re-lined up. There we go. All right, so now we have that dog clutch the right way around. I'll reinstall this spring, which holds that pin in. All good. Okay, so I wonder now if we reinstall the ball bearing and the dog clutch selector. No, it's still, still not poking out very far, is it? Interesting. I think I've sorted the issue. That little selector still pokes out not as far as this one, but I've just noticed that this shaft here is longer than this one. But if I line up where the reverse gear sits on those teeth, that's the same. And now the dog clutches line up and also the end of those shift shafts line up. So I, I still reckon that the problem was that someone installed this dog clutch the wrong way around. And that is going to put the selector out probably about four millimeters that way, which I reckon is going to play havoc with the selecting. So anyway, we'll put that back together and see if we have an issue solved. I reckon we will. So a lot of people will think that this whole gear case is full of oil. It's actually not. It's actually just from there to the front, which is filled with oil. This back section is actually exhaust, which we'll run through. The exhaust from the motor comes down here. You can see the light at the bottom there. We'll have a look in here. So that is that hole there. So the exhaust coming down there and it's gonna come out the prop, out these holes here. So this assembly here, that's a rear bearing carrier. Rear bearing is actually basically this whole thing. There's a couple of bearings in here. There's a seal at the end. This is the seal for the oil. So you can see, that actually sits there. So. The oil in this gear case is only from there to the front and it will run the whole way up to here because there is a bearing under the water pump here. So the oil is basically that whole area. It's going to be lubricating the shift shaft. The top bearing here is going to be circulating and it's filled up in this whole section. And for the forward gear, bottom of the shift shaft, and the reverse gear and all of that dog clutch assembly. So it's not the whole gear case that is filled, just that front section full of oil. And this back section here is exhaust. So before I go and replace this seal, I might do what I'd like to call a dry run. So basically just fit this back up quickly. Just see if I actually have gears and it's selecting properly. Rather than going ahead and putting all my seals in now, if I still got a problem, I'm gonna to need to pull it apart again. So I'll just quickly put this together just to verify that swapping that dog clutch over has sorted our problem. Okay, so I'm gonna spin the drive shaft. So that's fully up. So that should be in forward gear. 
Yep, we've got clockwise there. I should be able to go down one click with the shift shaft. There, that should be neutral. Awesome, it's looking good. And then one more down should be reverse. Yes, awesome. Okay, so it looks like that should be forward, reverse, neutral. Looks like that was the issue. Awesome. So yes, I can now go ahead, rebuild this year case, put the new seal in for the rear bearing carrier and fill it with oil. Put that impeller back on, the water pump. Put that back on and install this on the motor. And fingers crossed, that's the issue solved. So, gee, that would have been frustrating for whoever installed that dog clutch the wrong way around. They were, I don't know what they were trying to do, probably replace the prop shaft seal or something. And I don't know why you'd pull that off in the first place, but I'm stoked that, I mean, it's a nice looking gear case. The inside doesn't look like it's done much work. I'm glad I can get this back on the water, doing what it's supposed to do. Okay, so it's just started raining. You can't let that ruin your fun. <laughs> Let's give this gear case a test, see if we've got neutral, forward, and reverse. So we've got neutral, awesome. Forward, neutral, reverse. So good. If you guys are into boats, outboards, fast boats, slow boats, fishing boats, whatever, um, please subscribe to the channel. There's plenty of, you know, explanatory stuff here and, you know, go through the old videos. This is how to service an outboard, carburetor overhauls, all that sort of thing. If you guys are that way inclined to give it a go, you know, I fully encourage that. It's not that hard. And yeah, I'm glad I could explain the workings of a gear case to you guys. All right. All the best. See you champs. Bye.